Praise the Lord, mighty prophet of the Lord. Amen. Uh, the Lord bless you very much, uh, Pastor Joel. Now, uh, today is a very special day. Uh, today becomes a very, very special day on this day. This day, uh, January, Sunday, January 15th, the year 2017, is a particularly very, very special day because today is when the Lord Jehovah he then drew me close to the entrance of heaven, to the gate of heaven. And he showed it to me how the precious ship of Christ, the precious church, the beloved holy church of Christ, the bride of Christ, will finally enter into the kingdom of God. And what is particularly very, very special about this day is that he drew me close he drew me very close. There's so much detail I did not give in the morning. He drew me very close to uh, the entrance to heaven. First of all, he showed me how the church was leaving the earth and how they left the earth. So the Lord lifted me up and brought me to the entrance of heaven. It was very close. I could say about uh, maybe 20 meters, 20 to 30 meters away from me. And uh, in that tremendous visitation that is going to change, totally change the conversation of Christianity in the church. The conversation of the Christian faith changes today fundamentally, significantly. And uh, so about 20 to 30 meters from the entrance to heaven, then he shows me how the blessed, holy, the sheep of Christ are taken up and they, their feet leave the ground. They leave the ground, both those who were dead in Christ Jesus and those who were alive in Christ Jesus, born again, and how they, they are taken up. They leave the ground. It's spectacular. And actually, the glory of the Lord pulls them. I can see the glory of the Lord pulling them more like a string, pulling them. And they are all headed in the same direction. First of all, they go as if they are going away from where I was. As if they are going a little bit left. And then they turn and enter right. And as they turn right like this, there, right there is the entrance to heaven. So the Lord today brought me very close to the door to heaven. He opened the door. And it's amazing to see this entire picture. This was a very shocking visitation, a shocking sight to behold, even to partake of this sight, to see how finally the culmination, the climax of the events that uh, the church has been waiting for, has been gearing for over the many, many, many years, thousands of years, more than 2,000 years, over many generations, people trying to prepare, you know, there has been a constant conversation in the church about eternity. The, the paradigm of eternity has at times appeared complex to the people of this earth, the church, the believers, the Christians, and at times appeared more as simple as it is to simple little babies, children. The understanding of it as simple as even little babies can synthesize, can digest it and understand what it's all about. The entry to eternity has been a non-stop conversation in the church in the four winds of the earth and the four winds of heaven. But today is a very, very special day. This 15th day of January, the year 2017, on a Sunday, East African time on this other side. And uh, it is a beloved day, a treasured day, because uh, the Lord today, he took me 20 to 30 meters to the entrance of heaven, the door of heaven. And I saw the door of heaven open, and I saw the blessed sheep of Christ, the blessed church of Christ, the saints of the Lord, entering heaven. And most interesting and striking of it all was also the way they are dressed, because all of them 
from a distance. I began, he first began by showing me the ones that were entering in front of me. And then he brought me again, he made me turn left to look down and see the ones that were leaving the ground and as they are entering. So anyhow, uh, in this beloved warning and announcement that the Lord has now climaxed on the earth, this blessed conversation of the Lord, I see they are dressing. They are all dressed in the same, 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 exact same. They are dressed in fine linen, bright and clean, white, in fact, white, bright and clean. And uh, the linen is covered by the glory of the Lord because I could see now the, the, the glory has consumed them as they are coming in. But the Lord made me see individually. I could see their faces. He drew me so close, 20 to 30 meters. So I really could see the faces of the people entering. And uh, when, when I looked at their garments, the garment is not your tight garment. They have that garment. It looks like it has the inner garment. And then there is the, the, the flap because I could see the hands coming out on the, on the elbow here. I could see the hands and then by the elbow going down, there is another flap, flap of it. There is another flap of the cloth. So it was really more an angelic, more like an angelic dressing because, uh, they have the garment itself, but as they have their hands, as their hands are coming out of the elbow, you, the other part has covered up to almost close to half, close to the wrist. But you could see the flap of that wing, no, not wing, but really that part of the cloth that is emanating now from the hand. That is the piece that comes from the hands. It was such a powerful, very holy dressing. And yet I saw also their heads. They, are, they, are, they have turbans. Their heads are covered. Their heads are fully covered. And it is like you take a cloth and you twine the cloth. You twine it, you twine it, such that the cloth becomes like a rope. And then they tied now that same white cloth to cover the, to tie the turban. They tied it on the face. It was going up down, up, down, interwoven like this along the face and tied at the back as they were entering into the glorious kingdom of Jehovah Yahweh, Jehovah Elohim. And then, even interesting enough, I saw some of them with their children also entering. I saw some of them with their children together entering inside with their children. So really, this becomes a very, very special day. The Lord to take me, amazing, because uh, from a distance, from where I was, and to take me, to, to show me the door of heaven. Today I saw the door of heaven open. So finally the events I have been talking about are going to materialize, they are going to realize and actualize on the earth and in heaven. What a beautiful day that has really joyed up my heart. My heart is gelling with joy. Because I've sung this to the four ends of the earth. I've sung it as far as Gisborne, New Zealand, which is that as far as east is. And those as far as Inshon, Boryong, all those far east of South Korea. And then Bushan. I've sung it also as far as the tip is. The tip that is uh, Finland up to the tip towards uh, your vascular, those are now the extremities of Finland up there. And then also as far as Canada, the end, and as far as down South America, Concepcion in Chile. So I, I have spoken this announcement, and this announcement has brought up a huge conversation in church with the, the, the accompanying revival, the following revival, the revival that has marked it, and I am so blessed that finally and finally and finally, the Bible says nobody knows the day or the hour, neither do the angels in heaven, nor does the Son of Man, the Messiah himself. But now he that knows the day and the hour has brought me close to the entrance of heaven and actually showed me the door to heaven. It's a beautiful, it's a powerful situation that no man, no woman, can ever want to miss. And to see this, to see the change,
such finally entering heaven. I think there is no greater high, there is no greater climax in the conversation of the Christian worship experience in church than this one here. Because every reason for which Jesus came, the Lord came uh, to, to meet man, to encounter man, to talk to them in the noonday, to talk with people of common occupation as he did in the marketplace and went to the cross eventually, said his saying, did his work and went to the cross and then resurrected and was taken up through this very entrance. The very reason that the Lord came to meet man to engage in this conversation about the cross and salvation is this door that I saw open today. That one day, uh, the blessed Christians, the blessed believers, those who have had faith in Christ Jesus as Lord, may finally enter the glorious kingdom of Jehovah Yahweh. There is so much to take from this conversation. I am so happy and very astounded by all this. Today, the Lord brought me to the door of heaven the door of heaven and he spoke with me and showed me how the church is entering and so I have seen the entry of the church so for those who are out there and wondering and maybe saying well uh, this is a long time in coming this has been a relentless conversation over the ages you know what are the signs it's happening or going to happen now there you go you have been answered now that this event is indeed going to take place and the Lord that knows the day and the hour is going to bring it to finality, is going to bring it to reality. Now, uh, among other things that I wanted to say is that I know that before that I was in a meeting, and that meeting sounded to me more like uh, one of the meetings we've had around. I don't know whether it's coming up or the ones we've had. And I was in the meeting, and then, of course, after that, shortly, then the events take place. It looks more like a meeting I have seen happen already, a meeting that has happened already, or a meeting that is coming to happen, I don't know, but it looks very familiar meeting. Anyhow, I have seen the blessed saints wearing same, same, all of them, same dressing, same turban, same hairpiece, same pieces, same clothes, same finest linen, white, bright, and clean entering the glorious kingdom of God. And so, again, like I said, uh, when you read the Bible in the book of Luke, you see very clearly that no sooner had the relative of the Lord Jesus the Messiah appeared in the scene to announce his glorious coming, his appearing into the scene, no sooner had that, when the voice just hit the ground like this, it took a very short time and the Messiah came. So it really marks and tallies very, very well with the chronology and the prophetic timeline events of the Lord that I now feel that the Lord is coming. I now feel that time is running out. So if there are any people out there that had been uh, wavering this, be between Christian salvation and the world, there you go. Your final call is here now. And I, I, I don't think there's any greater love than the love on the cross and the follow-up with this announcement now. The announcement that all the events that occurred on the cross, the purpose for which they occurred, is now to be completed. And it's about to be completed. And those who are ready will be partakers of the grand finale, the grand entry, the beneficiaries of the works of the cross. And uh, I know that uh, right now, this is going to start up a big conversation in the church. It's going to, if the Lord tarries to come, in a day, two weeks, months, whatever the time, if the Lord tarries to come, this is going to start up a big conversation and for sure a revival. A revival must pick up on this because... Uh, the Lord has brought me close to the door of heaven, and then he opened the door to heaven, and they were entering, you know. It's amazing that I saw as if they were stepping on steps, you know, the final two or three steps. <laughs> they were stepping on the final one step, second step to enter now at the inside. And from where I was, 
at first I thought they were entering into a huge mountain. A very, very huge mountain. A mountain that is as big as probably uh, half the size of the earth. And then, only later I realized this was a huge cloud of his glory. This was the big cloud of his glory and they were entering inside there. Well, uh, this moment becomes a very pivotal time in the souls and hearts of men, having said this uh, announcement. This becomes a turning point in the hearts of all believers and the non-believers. It does not matter anymore. I can take example from uh, the Bible. From the Bible, I can take example from uh, the story of uh, uh, this prodigal son, the book of Luke chapter 15, because some people may now wonder, how do I pick myself up now that this announcement has taken place? How do I get myself from this backslidden place where I did backslide? I was a Christian, nilikuwa mkristo, lakini nikawacha. Sasa wengi sana waneza kuwa saizi bada kusikiza hili tangazo. Let me speak a little bit in Swahili and then I come back to English so we can bring the Swahili listeners on board. Uh, nimesema ya kwamba leo nilitunukiwa sana na buwana wakati buwana mwenyewe leo anileta karibu mita 20 hivi kati ya 20 na 30 karibu na lango la bingu nikaona vile lango la bingu linafunguliwa kwa wale wa wapendwa wa Mungu wale watakatifu wa Kristo ambao wametembea kwenye utakatifu na moyo unyenyekevu ya unyenyekevu wale ambao wameokoka wakatubu dhambi zao wakatembea kwenye uhaki na utakatifu na nimesema kwamba baada ya kuona haya nimegundua kwamba leo January tarehe 15 mwaka 2017 ni siku la tunuku sana siku kuu sana siku la kufana sana kwenye kalenda la uokovu hapa nchini na kanisa hata kule binguni kwa maana nimetunukiwa na bwana akanyonyesha vile kanisa itaenda maana yake mambo haya yatatendeka hivi punde so i have just said in uh, swahili that uh, the same thing i said in english that is such a great blessing and honor that the Lord can really bring me close to the door of heaven and open it and show me how the church is about to enter, is going to enter, and even their dressing. This is a beautiful thing. I have seen the heavenly countenance of the church. I have seen the heavenly presentation of the church. We must be a very blessed generation. You people must be a blessed generation to partake of these visitations of this hour. Na vile nilisema hapo mbele kidogo nilisema kwamba baada ya tangazo hili kuna wale wengi sana ambao watakuwa na mshtuko sana mara inaweza kuwa wameanguka walikuwa Mkristo ukaanguka ukarudi kwa pombe na dhambi ya ngono na uongo mambo mengi ufisadi uchawi mauaji kwa vya mimba mambo mengi dhambi alafu naweza kuwa unajiuliza je sasa ntarudi vipi kwa kwa maana saa imeyoyoma so i just said in swahili, in swahili the exact thing i said i said Many all over the world may be wondering, now that the announcement has been made in this form, close to the door, many, many announcements I've seen, but now he has brought me close to the door, to the door, to the door, meaning the events are really at the door now. Now that uh, this has happened, maybe you are a pastor somewhere in the U.S., a pastor in Europe, or a Christian in Asia, in South America, Central America, in the islands, wherever, New Zealand, everywhere, Australia. Maybe you are in China, and you're wondering, how do I get to pick up my pieces and be ready for this event, which seems very, very close. And I said, our encouragement for this hour that I want to use, I want to bring encouragement to you from the book of Luke, the book of Luke chapter 15. I find other scriptures being very important. The book of Revelation 15, 16, uh, rather 16, 15, uh, the book of uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17, and many other scriptures that celebrate the glorious entry of the church into eternity. Eternity with God. Now, however, when I look at the book of Luke chapter 15, the story of the lost son, the prodigal son, I see that probably that's where every single person can pick from, pick up from their pieces and get up and return home. Because in that place you see the Lord speaking about this very prodigal son 
uh, the son, the younger son. There were two sons in that home, the elder son and the younger son. And then the younger son goes into a lot of sin, probably the position that many Christians may be now. Maybe some of you have drifted away. You've gone into immorality. You've gone into new age. You've gone into uh, the gospel of prosperity. You are a pastor. You maybe you are the one who has been giving false prophecies, and you're now wondering how do I get to enter? The announcement has been made now. Whatever the condition, he say, this is such a glorious time for anybody to prepare and enter. I think if there's any moment of treasure, it is this hour because this hour engulfs and encloses all people within the same bracket. Those who want to enter, it doesn't matter Jew, it doesn't matter Greek. It doesn't matter Gentile, it doesn't matter Christian, it doesn't matter whether you're Muslim or Hindu, what you can repent now and receive Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior. Religion will not take you into eternity. And once you receive Christ, you begin to walk in righteousness, be baptized, and then you'll you, you enter. It will not matter anymore for how long you've been another religion. I see many times there are places where uh, in modern world, like uh, in Europe, uh, also all over parts of Asia, this, the ultra sophisticated Asia like Japan, South Korea, you see, um, you're talking about Singapore, you know, all these countries, Taiwan, where the, the sophistication of the day has drifted the church away from the matters of holiness and righteousness. But again, you can take comfort in this very scripture of Luke chapter 15 of the lost son because the main character you look in there as uh, as 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 you discuss your return now the, the main theme the main uh, treasure that you can pick from there to empower you is the fact that even as the son goes into all this immorality and sin and drugs and whatever prostitution and then ends up feeding pigs then you see he still comes back home I think this is the time for the church to come back home. This is the time for all humanity to come back home. And, and this does not matter. It doesn't matter you're Asian, you're African, you're American, you're European, Australia, New Zealand, where Fiji, from Tonga. It really does not matter anymore at this hour, given the circumstances around this announcement now. And if you look at Luke chapter 15, verse 1, in that scripture, he talks about the two sons, one, the, the, the elder son, the more righteous, and then uh, the one that squanders his things and goes away with the younger son. And then the condition of sin, he says, your sin unto me is like leprosy. So I know that we cannot enter. You cannot enter heaven with sin. So this becomes an awakening moment when the church has to confront her sin. The church here means all nations, really. It does not mean the people that got the house of the Lord alone. All people were created for eternity, and never did the Lord ever desire that anyone perish without repentance. And so, I, I look at the, the condition of this uh, younger son, feeding pig, having fallen into sin, squandered all his inheritance, and name it. There's a whole story there I don't have time for. But that, to me, is really the human condition you see in the church now, where you see there's nudity in the house of the Lord. That requires repentance. Where you see there is the preaching of the gospel of prosperity and money, how you need to be rich now and quick, tonight, overnight. That, that in itself also calls for repentance. And where there is the false prophecy Anyone walks into many churches globally tuned in now listening to me. You know many people walk into your houses of worship. And they significantly change your worship experience because they bring in falsehood. They bring false prophecy. The false apostles bring in the false apostolism, whatever it is. No doctrine. And th that also requires repentance. And today, you also see a lot of the postmodern world that has mixed up into the Christian uh, salvation, the Christian belief, and lifestyle, the dressing, the eating behavior, the habits, and all these things. So, I, I really, maybe homosexuality, that also has become a very significant factor 
across the entire globe, in all the nations that I've gone to, homosexuality has become a significant point of contradiction and controversy between the church and the Lord. And, and so maybe it is that law. And you're now wondering, but you see me, I'm a homosexual now. How do I get back? Th this story in Luke chapter 15 is very key because it, it really spells out a very important aspect of the fact that the, the, our God is very compassionate. Our Father in heaven that showed me that door is very compassionate to all people that will return to him. They will enter through this door. They, they will pass through this door and they will, want, uh, they will enter right into the kingdom of God. If you see um, the book of Matthew chapter 10, which I'm reading here, verses 5 to 6, he says, These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. So you see, based on that, Luke chapter 15, verses 1 to 2, you can tell right away. He's talking about the Pharisees and the scribes and the teachers of the law vis-a-vis -vis the, the other, the Gentiles. But, but this is the same picture here because you see, when he sent them, he sent them to uh, to the Hebrew church. Mm -hmm. He told them, do not go among the Gentiles. So, so at that point, you could say the Gentile church would be out. But I have seen them enter now. I've seen them enter now, which means really, 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 uh, in that whole uh, visitation of this day, the Lord is telling me that all will enter. is Jew, is Greek, is black, is white, is uh, Asian. It's uh, people of color, it's uh, island people. They, they will enter because I saw them enter through this door. And then this announcement now goes out to all the households of the earth. It does not matter your nationality. It does not even matter anymore what denomination within Christianity you subscribe to. All that matters is for one to prepare and be right. And when I look at the same Matthew chapter 15, verse 24, then this is what I see again. Matthew 15, verse 24. For those who may think you are probably disenfranchised or you are not well positioned enough to partake owing to your fall, the depth of your fall and degradation. Now, Matthew 15, 24 tells me, if I find it, I read it. It says, He answered, I can start it all the way from verse uh, Matthew 15. Let me start from verse 21. It says, The faith of the Canaanite woman. He said, Leaving the place, leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And we know very clearly that Tyre and Sidon, those are very wicked cities. They are really down. In fact, they're really in Lebanon. The, those were wicked cities where there was a lot of occult, satanic worship, devil worship. There was all manner of heathenism and godlessness. So, leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. Verse 22, he said, A Canaanite woman from that vicinity, meaning from within those cities, came to him crying out, Lord, son of David. Look, she knew him. She knew him. She called him Lord, son of David. Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is suffering terribly from demon possession. But in King James, he said, it is vexed with the devil. It's vexed with the devil. They have really pinned her down and they're tormenting her, according to King James. And then he says, verse 23, he goes on to say, Jesus did not, did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. Verse 24, he answered, Jesus answered, it is in red here. I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. Verse 25. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. The, the other version says she knelt down and worshipped him. But let's move on. Verse 25, he says. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. Verse 26, he replied. It is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs. 
Again, here the Lord is implying the fact that the bread was served. The bread was already served. Because in the Hebrew context of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God talks about the enjoyment of the delights of the Messiah. That's why they talk about the wedding feast. That's why in Matthew 25 it's equated, it's equalized to a wedding feast. In Matthew 22 it's equalized. This event I saw today, which I'm announcing to the earth. In the Hebrew context, in the Bible you see, it is equated to a feast. Matthew 25 talks about a wedding feast. Matthew 22 also that celebrates the garment and high nice the garment, the, the, the power, the authority of the garment for entry, talks about again a feast, a wedding feast, a king that has made a wedding banquet for his son. And so in the Hebrew context, they, they likened the coming of the kingdom of God to the celebration and the enjoyment of the delights of the Messiah at the wedding table, at the feast, the table of feast in heaven. And that's what he's saying. So the Lord Jesus is saying to this woman, no, you are a Gentile. I was sent only the lost sheep of Israel, he says. And he says, uh, and he says here, it is not right for me to remove the bread from the table where the, the children of Israel are supposed to be seated and eating the bread. The one for whom I brought the bread and toss it to the puppies. In other versions, they say the puppies, the dog, under the table. Now, that reminds us very much about Lazarus and the wealthy man. Because we know that Lazarus, Lazarus was being laid at the gate of this wealthy man wearing purple, linen, finest linen. And Lazarus, the wounds, dogs coming to lick his wounds, probably flies also, as you can imagine. And Lazarus was longing to eat the crumbs that dropped out from the table where the rich man ate. Before Lazarus died. But you see very clearly that eventually when Lazarus dies, he goes onto Abraham's side. He enters through this door that I saw today. Lazarus, the poor man that was longing to eat the crumbs, the, fall, the ones that this rich man, you can imagine how this rich man ate, ate in such a way that crumbs fell down. It must have been a corruption way of eating, a corrupt and scrupulous way of eating. I can imagine for myself. But anyhow, uh, Lazarus, the poor man, was longing to eat those little crumbs that fell, the pieces of meat, pieces of bread that fell under the table uh, to, to, to eat it, to eat those pieces uh, for his livelihood. And then when Lazarus dies, he goes into heaven. He enters through this door that I saw, this door. The Lord took me 20 to 30 meters to the door to heaven. The door of heaven. I have seen the door of heaven. It's a beautiful thing that has happened today. Today is a beautiful day. I have seen the door of heaven open today. What an awesome time to live to be a Christian at this hour. A holy Christian. And so Lazarus goes into heaven through this door. But when the rich man dies, he goes to hell. So you see the issue of entitlement there. He is eating at the table. So the Lord Jesus answers this Canaanite woman. He says, it is not proper for me to take the bread from the table, the bread that is meant for the children of Israel, the children of heaven, the children of the kingdom. That's how in the book of Matthew, Matthew, remember when he talked about Kafenawom, uh, Matthew chapter 8, verse 11, he says, he talked about the kingdom, the children of the kingdom. He says, it's not proper for me to take their bread from the table, the children of Israel, and give to you the Gentiles. But look how the whole thing reversed now. It totally reversed. Such that now Lazarus, who was longing for the crumbs, the little pieces that dropped from the table of the wealthy man wearing finest linen purple, is the one that now is seated with Abraham in heaven through this door. And the rich man goes to hell. But the same thing happens in Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15, you see from verse 1, it's totally amazing to you. Because you see, in verse 1, it's talking about the Pharisees. Verse 1, Luke chapter 15, when you look at verse 1, it talks about the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. Vis-a-vis -vis the Gentiles. You see that? He says, Again, Luke chapter 15 uh, is talking about uh, verse 11, not verse 1. Jesus continued. Hmm? There was a man, but, but you see verse 1, verse 1 up there, 
leave alone 11, verse 1. Now the tax collectors and the sinners yeah, were all gathering around near him. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muted. They murmured. This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So today I saw him welcome the, the Gentile church that is described here as sinners. What is described here in Luke chapter 15 verse 1 is the reflection now you see in verse 11. Because in verse 1 he talks about the, the tax collectors, the sinners, the Gentiles and all that against the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, the so-called righteous. But when you look at the same Luke 15 verse 11, then you see now the two sons. The younger son say to the father, Father, give me my portion of estate, goods that fall unto me. And then he went away and he fell into all that sin. And the other son actually represents the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. And when the other son falls to sin, ardent sin, he falls pathetic sin, abject misery. The final, I think that is the final degradation, the pit bottom, pit bottom of sin. That is the image of pit bottom of sin. When now he has gone into homosexuality, he has taken drugs, prostitution, he has used up all his inheritance, and he has hired himself to the person of that citizenry, of that country. He hired himself, and he's being given less food, meaning they didn't value his work also. And the famine struck him also. Meaning he was not wise. He was not as wise as Joseph that prepared some reserves for a coming famine. But anyhow, he is in that condition, feeding pigs and all that. And you know, in the Hebrew context, the pig, they didn't even give a name. They don't give a name. They said the other animal. You see that? It's, 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 it's the most filthy of all animals ever. You cannot eat it. You cannot touch it. You cannot touch pork. Kosher. Kosher. Hebrew Jewish food is strictly based on avoidance of pork. And so he's muddling himself, he's dealing with pigs. And I think that is the final leprosy, the final condition of sin. And he comes from there, he repents to the Father, and he enters into the kingdom of heaven. And so I think today, as the Lord has shown me the church entering, no one should ever be left out. You cannot say, oh, but we are not Kenya. Kenya has had all this revival for all these years. We don't belong to that, you know. We don't fit it. We cannot catch up. They have gone too high. No. The Lord is saying that, look, the son who was more righteous, who appeared to be more right in all his attitude, his countenance, his positioning, his conduct, and everything he did was right. He did not enter. And that's why it doesn't matter whether you're in New Zealand, you're in Wellington, you're in Christchurch, you're in Auckland, New Zealand, or you're in Brisbane, Australia, Melbourne, wherever, in a nightclub. You may be listening to me in a nightclub. It doesn't matter now. Maybe you are somewhere in Europe, you know, you're in the United States, or you're in another religion altogether, and you're listening to me, you're wondering, how do I partake of this event? He's saying those that had qualified themselves, had counted themselves qualified, they did not enter. They did not enter. And that sounds a greater warning also to those who are in this revival. Make sure you don't fall into this complacency of saying we are the righteous, we are the ones that belong, you know. Because he says now that the, the, the lost son is able to come and then you are able to see this enormous forgiving power of God. In fact, you see the authority of repentance. And that's what I want to bring to you today. That all the people that the Lord privileged me today to see entering through this door. These are repented people. It's not about nationality or being in which church they came from where. I know now it's important that every nation, every country listen to me. That's obvious. That's apparent. You must subscribe to this. That's obvious now. Everybody knows that this is the authority of the Lord that is directing the nations to enter for something good, for eternity with God, for heaven, yes. But he's saying it's never too late to join the, the, the movement, to join the train of revival, repentance and holiness, to join this massive tsunami that is sweeping now towards the kingdom of God. It's amazing, the whole mountain. I saw a mountain, I thought, wow, this mountain is bigger than half the earth. 
right in front of me here. And then they are entering the mountain. I said, why are they entering this mountain? When I checked, I said, wow, look, they're entering the glory of the Lord. And then I saw the door to heaven that was open. So th there are many, many scriptures that would encourage you at this hour to help you to position yourself that you may benefit, that you may plug yourself into this conversation that the Lord has brought to the four ends of the earth. It doesn't matter you are a lawyer, you are a teacher, a doctor, ECD teacher, you are a nurse, you are a business person, a banker. You may just be an unemployed person, a student, you're not employed. You're in the universities around there. You're just going around doing things, you know. Uh, you have no, nothing you do. You're lazing around at home or you have work, you do an accountant, whichever the profession engineer architect. It does not matter anymore. Village woman, just a, a widow, a, a cripple. It doesn't even matter your condition now. This is the highest hour at which the Lord can exploit this visitation to harvest literally the, 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 the entire earth. The entire earth. And those people that I saw entering there, they are people that had been down this way. That at one point in their lives they had been feeding pigs. They were in Tatars, in the stench of the pig style. They had gone through the whole cascade of sin, and they repented. All they simply did is to repent and preserve the gains of repentance. So today is really a very special day. I find this day to be very, very particularly special. And it does not matter who you are. Isaiah, let me finish the Isaiah 53 verse 6, just to underscore to you, that literally everyone can enter today, can choose that I'm entering now, and I'll wait until the door opens, then I go in. Isaiah 53 verse 6, look at what he says here. Isaiah 53 verse 6, he says, We all, meaning all, total all, we all, like lost sheep, have gone astray. Each one of us has turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. That is a powerful statement. He says, regardless whether Jew or Gentile, Asian, American, African, South African, Egyptian, Libyan, Kenyan, Tanzanian, whatever, Cote d'Ivoire, Cameroonian, it really does not matter at this hour. Ugandan, really, those names won't matter. He says, we all, like lost sheep, have gone astray, like that lost son, who literally went astray, in the lunacy of sin, in the madness of craving for independence, autonomy, and sin, have gone astray, like lost sheep have gone astray, each of us has turned to his own way. And I know all the nations of the earth are now tuned in, in their largest numbers, listening to this announcement here. But how beautiful a day this underscores. This cause on the chart, on the calendar of days that God ever created. That on this day, the Lord took me and he showed me the entrance to heaven. The door to heaven, 20 to 30 meters away. And I saw the beautiful church, the glorious and holy church, nicely entering and they were all together it was a wonderful moment of peace if there is any moment I've seen that is peaceful that is in one unison where people have a, they have arrived you could see that they have arrived it was a beautiful moment to behold I saw it it really made my heart leap my heart jumped we all like lost sheep we all like sheep have gone astray each of us has turned to his own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So what he's saying is this. He's saying that when you look at the parable of the lost son, the prodigal son, that parable that Jesus gave us that really talks about the condition of the church in these days, you see that there was this son, the younger son, and in the Hebrew context, of course, when he takes in his, his inheritance, he takes only one third, really. Because the, the, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 12, verse 17, is very clear on how to divide the, the, the estate for the elder son and the younger son. The elder son normally takes two-thirds 
or the father of the state. So you can see he took his one third, which is really half of the brother. The brother is two thirds. He takes one third. Two of the one third is two thirds. He takes one third. So he takes half of what the brother gets. So essentially the brother, the elder brother was given everything, but he did not enter. He did not enter. That is a tragedy. And that's why I'm using this to encourage everyone, regardless of your condition. You may be in a place where you had lost hope. You had forgotten about Christian salvation. This is the moment you can ignite your salvation today at this hour. And at the end of this message, I'm going to lead the entire earth to the Lord Jesus. I'm going to lead the entire earth to repentance. It's going to be a historic moment at the end of this conversation um, engaging the church on. I'm going to lead the entire, the, the nations to the Lord at the end of this. But I'm saying that things have gone so high, we have come to close to this climax, and it does not matter what your condition be. It does not matter whether you've not been to Kenya to see this end-time revival. It does not matter whether you were flipping around the, the dial cords of your internet radio and ran into me. This is your first time to hear this. Those things will not matter anymore. What matters is that you can essentially make substantive gain and prepare in repentance and enter. That's all that will matter at this hour. And I've read from the Canaanite woman that was equating herself. She, she was being told by Jesus. He said, no, why should I take the bread from the children of heaven, the children of Israel, for whom the bread was meant, and then now give it to the dogs? Then you see, the Gentiles were equated to the dogs because he said, no, I came to the lost sheep of Israel. I was sent to the lost sheep of Israel. But now look, when the Canaanite woman sees him, says, Lord, son of David, she is able to identify him much more, much more, much, much more than those that were supposed to be eating the bread on the table. Than the Hebrew church. I know the Lord has a plan for the Hebrew church. However, the oracles that speak here, they speak really so much. If you look at the book of Matthew 8, 11, it says, many shall come from the east as far as the east is. And from the west, as far as the sun sets, and they will pass you by here and enter into the kingdom of God through this door, this door here. This is what Jesus talked about when he was speaking to them in Capernaum. This door here, what I saw today. And let me read the scripture here. Again, the book of Matthew, I'm reading chapter 8, verse 11. And this is what he says here. It's what he says here, Matthew chapter 8. Hmm? Yes, again, verse 10, he says, Jesus heard this, and he was astonished, and he said to those following him, he was marveled, the Bible says marveled, astonished. I tell you the truth, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. Verse 11 that we are targeting is saying, I say to you, that many will come from the east and the west and will take, will enter, in other words, and take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. This is what I saw today. I saw that those that were entering, it was neither Jew, it was neither Greek, it was neither Christian, neither black, neither what. One thing was common with them. They are born again Christians that were in salvation, repented, received Jesus, and they entered. It's not about this Christianity of Catholicism and what and what and all, all these things you call Christian. These were born again people that have received Jesus and accepted righteousness and turned away from sin. In fact, when now the son says, Father, I have sinned against you and sinned against heaven, I, I'm shocked. He was saying, when I go back to my father, I know that the least of his servants has enough bread to eat and spare. I will tell him, please make me one of your least servants. But I'm astonished when he comes close to his father. He says, Father. He didn't say, Sir, or Afande. He didn't say, Afande. He didn't say, Sir. He said, Father. He still called him Father. So the Lord created us all. 
literally every single nationality, every race, every language, every people, every tongue can prepare today and enter into this glorious kingdom through this door. Jesus talks about this door here. Matthew 8. And he says, they will come from the east, from the west, all of them will come and enter through this door and sit with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob at the dinner table of the wedding feast of the Lamb. So it really does not matter. No one can ever drift farthest away that the authority of the Lord's repentance cannot pull him back. I think what matters most is that he came and said, Father, please, I have sinned. He called him Father. I was shocked. How can he call him Father? And the Father is able to recognize him and to throw his compassionate love around him and clothe him and accept him. And then that is all that mattered. It didn't matter what homosexuality had been through, what prostitution had been through, alcoholism had been through, lies had been through, murders had been through. What matters is that he returned. He came back home. He did return. He did come back home. He went back home. Hallelujah. So we can all return home today and enter through that door because today, in this day of January 15th, the year 2017, at about 708 or so in the morning, the Lord took me so close, 20 to 30 meters, and He showed me how people were returning home finally. They were returning home to the Father. And it did not matter race, color, creed, whatever they had subscribed to on the earth here, which clubs they were, golf club, whatever, those who are wealthy, or which passport or whatever. What mattered is that they repented and received Jesus, and they were found righteous and given the garment of salvation, the garment of the Redeemer. And they entered, I saw them enter. I have seen the door of heaven open today and the church enter. I have seen the door of heaven. It's a powerful day. It changed my life today. I have seen the door of heaven open and they enter. So for those of you who may feel that at this moment, you just want to enter through that door. You want to make sure that you are ready, that when that moment strikes like lightning, in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, that you'll be found right and ready. Just repeat this prayer with me, a simple prayer. It doesn't matter in the island, it doesn't matter what time it is there, maybe morning, maybe you are in your internet radio, driving your car. Really, those things do not matter anymore. Maybe you are seated in a train in New York City, and you are now on your internet radio with your cell phone, and you're listening to this. It does not matter, we can all enter. Just repeat this prayer. Say, precious and dear Jesus, Lord, I repent on this day and turn away totally from sin. Lord, I receive you in my life today. I open up the door of my heart today. And receive you as my Lord and Savior. Please forgive my sin. And establish your word in my life. And rivet me and establish me on righteousness. And holiness without which I cannot see you. Lord, I have received you today in preparation for the glorious kingdom of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I am born again. So if you say that prayer, remember the Lord Jesus said, 
it is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. So find a place to make sure you are baptized in complete immersion. Not these are the baptisms you see around. I'm talking about baptism in complete immersion, the way Jesus was baptized. And stick to the teachings of the word. Find a Bible teaching church as we wait for that striking moment. Don't get these churches that preach a lot of comedy and other things, money, what, what, what. Talk, go, go to a Bible teaching church that you may read the word and grow in the word and prepare for this event that I have seen to enter through this door. Because he said many will come from the east and many from as far as the sun sets and enter through this door and sit at the wedding feast of the Lamb in the glorious, most peaceful, most blissful, most blessed eternal kingdom of God. May the Lord bless you all. Today is indeed a special day. I have seen the door of heaven 20 to 30 meters away from me. I saw the door of heaven and I saw the wonderful, beautiful church of Christ entering the kingdom of God. This is the one about whom it is written. I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. This is the one about whom it is written in scripture. I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. May those who have ears know that the Messiah is coming. Shalom. Shalom.